Hey, do you guys want to buy a kingfish? You want to live in a crazy house even though you're not crazy? Are you in the market for two-headed monsters? If you just like listening to more stories every week, then you can help me out. Go to my website, jmore.com, and click on the Amazon link on my website. If you're going to be shopping at Amazon anyway, why not help support more stories at the same time by going to jmore.com, J-A-Y-M-O-H-R.com, bleep, and then click on the Amazon link to their homepage, and then you can shop for whatever you want. Instead of me pushing a product on you, you can just simply go to amazon.com through jmore.com and get any product you want. I mean, I do a lot of favors for you, don't I? I ask you for one thing here, Henry. Go to amazon.com through jmore.com. Look, this is Harvey Keitel. Go to jmore.com. Click the link. Who's going to be okay at amazon.com through jmore.com? Say the damn words. Do me a favor. Help us out. Help keep this podcast rolling. You know how much money I got to pay Matt Cohen every week? Go to amazon.com through jmore.com and I will personally mail each of you $15 million. Part of this was made up. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. I work with you a lot. Oh, yeah. By the way, Matt Cohen doesn't get enough kudos. I maybe I don't know who else lays it out for him, but the fact that the podcast starts with such a great collection of quotes and sound bites. Good job, Matty Cohen, ba- at Bagged and Boarded on Twitter. Oh, sorry, Bagged and Boarded is his uh, is his uh, uh, podcast, and on um, Twitter he is Camel Toad at Camel Toad. <laughs> It sounds like a morning radio program. Hey, it's Camel Toad and Rape Kit. Let's go to Spice Rack with weather. Uh, that, by the way, I've completely bit the styles of Ron Bennington, Ron and Fez. At the beginning of their show, they used to have long montages of movie quotes. So that's what inspired me to do that. Now, no one in the history of the internet has ever had a 100% approval rating. Not the Patriots... Not the Celtics, not little Rick, not the little magician Ricky Pitino, but this man, for some reason, has a 100% nothing ever has been negatively said about him. Barry Katz, back in the house! Wow. The showbiz. That's showbiz. incredible. I can't believe that no one has ever said anything negative. Have you, Matt Cohen? No, nah, I have not seen it yet. I have not seen one... Thing of like whatever. Well, I mean, they shit on Catherwood. They shit on my wife. They shit on. We're gonna change that today. All right, that'll be good. The, everyone has something to say about somebody. You're the only one ever where people are like, when I mean, other guests sit here. Brian Koppelman, screenwriter, goes, "Yeah, the, the comics are fun and all, but you got to get cats back." <laughs> is that a, is that like just two Jewish guys looking that, out for each other? I don't think so. Mishpuka, <laughs> Mishpuka. That's right. <laughs> How are you, pal? That's right. We'll share a lot because I have a lot. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna talk about a lot today. We're gonna talk a lot about a great stuff that happened to you. I don't know if you've shared it yet, uh, but I have some actual um, comments about that because you were talking to me uh, at the last laugh, which was a show that you just a did, pilot we did for TBS, hidden camera show. Uh, you're talking about your uh, April Foolishness show. and Kevin and Bean, April Foolishness. Have you shared a little bit of that on any podcast of what happened? La- we did a live podcast, the one that's up before this. I'm talking about afterwards, talking about how it went for you and the whole I've thing. not really broken it down. I think you should break it down because I have some things to break down about it too. Well, where would you like me to start, honey? 
Why don't you start from the beginning and then right. uh, and August twenty third, nineteen seventy. At the end, you go to the end. I was born two months premature. A August little bit 23rd. farther in advance. All right. I remember at four year, at eight years old, my mom stopped drinking. Let's start Keep when you going. arrive at the uh, Universal Amphitheater. I show up at the Universal Amphitheater. It's uh, I, apparently I was like the last person to show up. I think because I don't party, I just want to show up and do the uh, following Barry Katz's advice. Do the gig, get in the car, and go the hell home, man. Get in, get out. Get in and get out. My mother man. always told me when I when I uh, called her up and I'd have a great conversation with her, I'd say, "Mom, I love you," and she'd pause and she'd say, "Show me, don't tell me." And so, I that's all like about that the because I I found myself lately telling people they whenever somebody says to me like, "Well, I try," like Brad Williams, the dwarf or little person comic, he calls himself a midget. Fuck it, the midget comic. That had the best set of the night, hands down. He goes, hey, man, I try. And I always stop people and go, no, man, you're doing. There's a difference. You're fucking doing it. And we were talking about it last night uh, in now, Irvine. Now, do they know what happened that night and your feelings about what happened, how Brad he most, did? Brad most certainly does. But does your audience know that? Uh, well, we'll see. Brad Williams, when I get, okay, I get to the Universal Amphitheater. It's 6,000 people. It's for the Wounded Warriors Project. And we have talked about this a little bit, but not Barry Cat style. And people are really excited for you to come back. So this is good. We'll chop it up. I get there. Uh, Larry King goes on first. Hello. <laughs> and apparently he did really well. But right when I get there, Eddie after Does he gym- perform with suspenders or without? Yes. The- okay. And his wife came out like Shelby Chong. I-, I didn't know that she came out. But then when I saw still photos from the Orange County Register, I just see this tall blonde next to the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? Uh, now I'll bring my wife out to help me. Hello. My wife, come on out. Hello. I give Methuselah a seat on the bus. Yes, you're on the air. Peter, hello. <laughs> Pilot, go. Thoughts. What's Barabbas doing today? Hello. So he goes out. Then after him, I believe. Oh, shoot. Oh, Felipe Esperanza. Esparza. Like I said. Let me finish. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, he did very well. Socially, very, uh, n- very shy, j- painfully shy, where I felt like he might kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward 10 years, he might kill himself. I hope not. I, think I hope not, too. He's just, you know, there's certain comedians, as uh, everybody knows who's listening. It's just like the people you meet in life. There are certain people who are, you know, walk the same uh uh, way and the same speed as everybody else and then other people don't and uh, there's some brilliant artists that we know that uh, socially they just don't connect with the other comics as well as others is and he was he like that on, on uh, last comic standing he didn't really mix and mingle yeah he didn't mix and mingle that wasn't his thing because he's you know a lot of people don't understand this but he's he's really a, uh, much older than most comics and he has had a really hard life. He's a guy who, um, I remember when he threw out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium, he invited me there. This was an amazing thing. And, and, and I didn't know why it was so amazing. And then we go outside in that, the area where you walk around the stadium. He says, listen, I, I want to walk you out. I said, you don't have to walk me out. This is your day. He said, no, I want to walk you out. I said, okay. And I'm walking and he stops at every, vendorship or whatever you call the thing and everybody is saying how you doing felipe what's up homie how you doing how you doing and i'm like felipe why why do all these people know you so well and he said because i worked here for nine years i was a hot dog vendor (laughs) that's incredible i thought he was gonna say because i am ron say and now he's coming back to throw out the first my name's not felipe i'm ron (laughs) say and i don't know why you keep calling me felipe it's a little annoying how tall are you jesus (laughs) And when he was on, and just to, just to get back, because I'm, I'm breaking into the story, and I'm sorry about that, but with yeah. Felipe, one of the things that I uh, and I feel good about him winning the show, and he was somebody who I really uh, pushed for the show, I always told him before he went on, every time, I just looked him in the eye and I said, undeniable. If you're undeniable, you will never lose. You can't lose. Und- if you're undeniable, you will not be denied, and you will win this competition. And I, I always felt that because he had been through such adversity. Because a lot of people don't know this about him as well. Guy didn't have a car. Guy literally was living. Wait, in- time out. You just mentioned eight million Manhattanites. So I'm sorry, we're talking about like, Cali- I don't have a car either. I'm I live sorry. on the Upper East Side. I'm a millionaire. What's the sorry, problem? Sorry, everybody. 
in California, if you don't have a car, you're in trouble. Yeah. And so he was riding a bicycle to gigs and things like that. I mean, this guy literally had nothing. And all like of a Freddie sudden... Mercury. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he wins $250,000. So, but go back with your story. I'm sorry. You get there. I want to ride my bicycle. But, but I will say this about Felipe, and, and I don't know what happened in Universal <laughs> Amphitheater. You said he did really well. That's the thing when you're a comic and you get to a point where you do something, like you win a competition... A lot of comics think, hey, I got there, I won, and now I can coast a little bit. But you can't coast. you got to keep going. you got to keep working harder. And you don't work harder, you're just going to stay that level or you're going to go down. And then Is he still going? Is he coasting or is he going? I didn't see a set. <clears throat> do, you, is he, uh, do you manage him? I do not manage him How right now. How do you let that slip through your fingers, cats? Well, I'll, I'll explain that later. Let me introduce you to my new client. <laughs> Felipe Ronce Esperanza, hello. <laughs> but the Please thing- welcome the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, hello, you're on. So anyway, so the thing is, you got to keep going. And if you look at all the people that were on Last Comic Standing, you can count on half a hand anybody who's doing anything or making any money. Yeah, or if they're making right. money, they're just doing comedy clubs. Like Ralphie Mays, a guy that took it up a notch and just plowed through america and he that's a guy that will not be denied but this is where ralphie may will be denied and i'll probably you know have a half hey a that's chi- fucked up cats prob- air me out to dry in a podcast player <laughs> i'll probably have half a chicken in my bed after this, <laughs> <laughs> this is over with what, that arkansas mafia I don't instead know. of a horse's head half a chicken <laughs> you're the best <laughs> but the thing about ralphie is and I, I always talk about this is like in order to get where you need to go as a comic in this world and the way it is, you have to be able to book significant acting jobs. You have to be able to walk into a room where well, there's an intern with a camera. Hold on a second. You, we've, I got to put a pin in that, brother. Stephen Wright. Uh, Won an Academy Brian, Award. For making a short film. And he was acting in it. Won an Academy oh. Award. All right. All right. So Brian I- Regan. Brian Regan has not booked significant acting jobs, and he's not as big a person in this business as he could be if he books significant acting He's booking acting bigger jobs. rooms than I am. Way I know, bigger. as a stand-up, and right. he's tremendous. But you think as a stand-up comic, you have to book acting gigs to be... A if you st- want to get to the next level in every area of this life and this career, you have to book significant it's a catch-22 in ralphie's defense because you got to come off the road if you're out there on the road and all of a sudden you're making a lot like maybe a million dollars doing clubs to get those acting roles you got to put your livelihood aside and just stay in la and not make any correct money. that's hard it's hard but it's, i don't i don't fault the guy you don't have to go out 52 weeks a year you can be around for some things and when you go let, let me let me back up ralphie may is a guy by the way i i I'm sure Ralphie will say this. I, I I don't have anything bad to say about Ralphie May. I've had, I, I, I think I have a that does. great relationship with One of Ralphie the great May. guys. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that let's just say in his lifetime he's done 50 auditions for scripted television and film or 100. Okay. Do you know anything that he's booked? that was scripted in film and tell one and let's say it's one or two or whatever it is. The fact is, is that when you walk in a room, your chances of booking something are normally in my mind, me, you, I would say, and I'm being conservative, 33% shot of booking it. I would say 20, but okay. Okay. So if every comic who was able to go in and do an audition could do that, they would be, furthering their careers but what happens is and i'll explain is that this is why you're so amazing and we're getting off the track and i'm not trying to shine your ass here but comedy and acting are like swimming and running okay you very rarely find a guy who can run a mile and then go in the pool and swim a mile and you very rarely can find somebody who can swim a mile and run a mile you should have just said vice versa we would have followed you okay so it's different muscles but some comedians are blessed with both muscles evil, e- to work equally well. You happen to be one of a handful of people who have that skill set. Who you know, There's people who uh, got television shows who didn't have it and then learned how to do it, like Jerry and Ray. And they just, you know, they got the development deal and they were surrounded by incredibly great people. And then they built that thing, Roseanne, as well. 
So those people became what I consider to be very good George actors. George Carlin, airtight. George Prince of Carlin, Tides, the gay neighbor. Yeah, incredible. Airtight. So, and I think that's the thing with most comedians that they don't have, and if they don't have it, they don't want to put in the time to do it. And I'll explain this as well. This is what bothers me so much about him. Comedians go on stage and they don't prepare. They just, you know, they they don't. Maybe they write down their set, the best thing that they made. They don't work all day thinking, okay, let me go over my set and a couple of times and do what. They go in, they do the set, they fucking kill, and they get laid afterwards. That's what comedians do. The no preparation, I kill philosophy. So when they go into the acting audition, a lot of times they're.